Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the Sadie Hawkins dance. Now, just bear with me for a minute. You might be thinking, Sadie Hawkins? Isn't that just some sort of dance that was going to be held in lieu of frolic last year? What does that have to do with me? But trust me, Sadie Hawkins isn't just some irrelevant dance that you shouldn't care about. In fact, today I'm going to talk about why it should never be held again because it causes it makes an impact on a society that is much bigger than we think. So, what's Sadie Hawkins? Well, according to Wikipedia, which is, as we all know, a very trusted source, <laughs> the Sadie Hawkins dance is usually a less formal dance sponsored by a high school in which female students invite and pay for male students. This is contrary to the custom of male students inviting females to school dances and paying for dinner such as prom and homecoming. Okay, that's the definition. We all get it, right? Notice this. Think of a school dance, whether it is the 70s, 80s, 90s, oops, 90s or 2000s. Essentially, couples at a dance are usually the result of a boy asking a girl. Custom of male students inviting females. My junior prom occurred last spring. Weeks prior to the dance, promposals, which is a slang term for prom proposals, were happening here and there. But things felt a little bit different. What I and other many students saw were girls asking boys to prom. So I thought, OK, cool. Because a lot of my female friends were asking their crushes to prom, and they ended up succeeding. Everyone was happy. I was happy. So everyone was happy. However, there was gossip everywhere. Did you hear about Amber asking Ron to prom? Don't you think that's so weird? So many girls are asking guys this year. I feel so bad for the guys. Why are there so many girls asking guys this year? These were things I was hearing day after day after day. Of course, I can't judge the whole of our school based on a few comments I heard in the hallways, so I sent out two surveys, one for the females and one for the males. For the females, I asked, would you rather ask a boy to the dance or have a boy ask you? Similarly, for the males, I asked, would you rather ask a girl to the dance or have a girl ask you? Around 130 people responded to each survey. 68% of the females stated that they would rather have a boy ask them. Okay, now let's take a look at the boys. I would say that the results are pretty much equal. Now, what does this mean? Well, you girls are sitting around like, oh my god. <laughs> Why won't he just ask me? Is it because he's too busy flirting with that other girl? Ugh, I hate her. Why can't he just ask me? <laughs> Boys are actually not that eager to ask first. They don't mind. So why are girls being so passive? Why is it that most girls are so reluctant to ask boys when nearly half of the boys would rather to be asked first? I can imagine it gets pretty tiring for the guys having to ask girls out all the time. Am I right? So why are there still so many girls sitting around waiting for their dream man to come along to sweep them off their feet when they could do so first? The culprit is fairy tale stories. Like many other girls, I grew up reading a lot of fairy tales. They were harmless. I remember I just wanted to be like the princesses. I wanted their big sparkly eyes, their tall slender body, and their beautiful long hair, which as you can see that didn't quite work out well for me. <laughs> Anyways, as I grew up, I found a haunting similarity between every single story. Let's take a look at these classic fairy tales. Uh, Cinderella, Snow White, Mulan, Beauty and Beast, and Little Mermaid. Yeah, okay. So, what do they have in common? The happy endings were, was when the princess finally married the prince. Each of these princesses grew up with such unique characters and distinctive backgrounds, yet their stories always ends right after royal marriage. 
You can see the influence of these stories in today's society. Women tend to panic when they are still unmarried in their 40s, and maybe in 30s. They believe that in order to have a stable and complete life, they need to be married. I understand that this doesn't apply to all women, but truth is that a lot of the majority of homes still work with the husband working all day while the wife stays at home to watch the house. So, in this picture, who's more useful? It is, as most people would think, the man who goes out and brings home the money that supports the woman. This is an example of how children carry notions of male dominance into adulthood. Little girls hear stories about how finding a man is the ultimate goal in life, so they grow up believing that they're simply not complete until they find a man, when in reality, women are complete by themselves. Why don't all women feel like they can support themselves financially? Why do some women feel incomplete? How can we fix a problem that is already so ingrained within our characters? We have to start by finding the root of the problem, which is the mindset of the youth. The youth is the future. Morals that the youth carry as they grow up are morals that they establish as children. Beliefs are pretty hard to shake off, especially when you're hitting menopause and you start to act a bit more stubbornly. As you grow older, your beliefs will start to affect the important decisions you make in life. Your beliefs will become a part of you. Oop, sorry. Um, if we want to stop hindering the progress of femi feminism, we start young. If we want to forever change the idea of gender balance in society, we start young. If we want change, we start now. Removing the Sadie Hawkins dance is one step towards that. By removing it, we don't reinforce the idea that there is a custom of male students inviting females when it comes to high school dances. The norm will no longer be boys ask girls. The norm will cease to exist. <clears throat> girls will no longer grow up and believe that they will be incomplete without a man. Girls will grow up to, move, to be more confident, more confident to support themselves financially, more confident to participate politically, and most importantly, more confident to advocate for their own rights instead of staying shadowed under the dominance of men. Now, what I'm, I'm not saying that guys aren't allowed to ask girls to the next dance, nor am I saying that girls aren't fighting for their own rights if they're not taking initiative. What I'm saying is that girls shouldn't feel like they're too controlling or manly when they take initiative, and guys shouldn't feel that they're any less of a man if they happen to be asked first. Because at the end of the day, no gender is more dominant. There are some people who like to be more submissive and others who like to be more domineering, but no such trend can be seen if it was all based on gender. I'm well aware that taking away the Sadie Hawkins dance will not immediately change the attitude of teens, but it's a starting point. It's a starting point that will contribute to what shapes the youth who will one day be the pioneers of our future. This is merely an example of something we can change in order to be one step closer to achieving gender equality. I encourage you to find one thing in your life that seems insignificant that may actually cause lasting impact on human character. Direct the next generation onto a path that can one day make gender equality a reality. Find the little things, change it, and shape the youth who will one day be our future. Thank you.